morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Father Jason, a priest here at St. Luke's Church, a gift and honor to gather with all of you on this beautiful Sunday morning. We have an extra special gift today because we're celebrating uh, the sacrament of holy baptism for Aiden Levi. In a few moments, we'll bring him to these holy waters. Um, thank you, Danny and Nicole. We go way back to my previous parish in Burlington. I was blessed to be able to officiate at the wedding and blessed to be able to be part of this. So thank you for the gift that you're giving us here at St. Luke's, and family and friends, welcome. Thank you for praying with us this morning. If you are visiting, it's a gift to have you with us. Um, because we have a baptism, we'll do a little juggling of orders of worship today. I hope you receive a baptismal order of worship with Aiden's name on the cover. We're going to begin our liturgy with this after our opening hymn, and we're going to return to it immediately after the homily. And then after the baptism, we'll go back to our regular order of worship that you can find in your pew racks with the Celtic cross on the front. These will guide you through the entire liturgy. We're also going to keep you on your toes today with some hymn changes, some curveballs, but uh, so those aren't all the correct hymns, but we'll get you through it together today. Our opening hymn is, however, correct, and that is from the blue hymnal that you'll find in your pew racks, and that's hymn number 178. So if you're able, I invite you to rise at this time. <laughs> Be with you. And 
let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as Cecilia comes forward to proclaim our readings. We will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again, that death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Our hymn before the gospel, our evangelical hymn, is not hymn number 678. It's hymn number 679. So 679 in the blue hymn. Please rise as you are. Against her mother-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, 
and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be always pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. There is a book that's going to be published in September called Ask Uncle Jack. And it's written by Damon Vaughn, and it's uh, a book of wisdom that Damon uncovers in all sorts of interactions with his Uncle Jack, who turns 100 years old in July. And in advance of the publication of the book, Uncle Jack is all over social media in these beautiful little interviews with his nephew, Damon, who's just mining his life for all sorts of wisdom. Much of it, it's sweet, but but profound. Wisdom we would never otherwise know from this man if it wasn't for social media, I guess. Uh, and, and indeed, a lot of the wisdom is really sweet. Like Uncle Jack reminds us to always take time every morning to enjoy a good cup of coffee. And to make sure we don't spend too much time on our magic mirrors, which is what he calls our cell phones. Especially if it's a blue sky day. Because for Uncle Jack, if it's a blue sky day, then you have to make time to get outside and enjoy the blue sky day. And not just enjoy it, but if it's a blue sky day, you also have to make sure you sing a song from your heart. Any song that's in your heart. Because a blue sky day is worthy of a song from your heart. And while much of these interactions are full of incredibly sweet bits of wisdom, there's also a real beauty in their encounters because it's not just about touching on the sweeter side of life. Damon with his uncle also touch on the more distressed parts of life as well. So recently in a random check-in with Uncle Jack and talking about his upcoming 100th birthday, Damon asked, Uncle Jack, how are you doing? And Uncle Jack in his wheelchair, flannel shirt on, hat on, just put his head down. And he said, oh Damon, I'm so lonesome. He said, I live with a haunting loneliness because everybody I know is gone. And instead of trying to, to sugarcoat it, Damon allowed him to kind of sift through the distress of this loneliness. He hung his head and Damon finally just kind of softly asked Uncle Jack, he's like, Uncle Jack, when you're really lonesome, what, what helps you? And Uncle Jack raised his head and got a smile on his face, and he said, It's people like you, Damon. It's visits from people. It's friends like you who come and spend time with me, and with you I don't feel lonesome at all. And even if it was just for a moment, the distressed life of loneliness was formed and shaped in this encounter with his nephew Damon into much more meaningful life of gratitude for the moment and the life that was right in front of him. On another encounter, Uncle Jack was dealing with a, a struggle because Uncle Jack is a dreamer. He's always dreaming about how life could be for himself and for others. And he was honest with Damon, saying, you know, for most of my life I just felt like I never fit in to the world as it is. Because I always feel like I'm living in a, in a land of make-believe because I'm dreaming all the time. And that's hard. And, and again, Damon, through his tenderness and, and care for his uncle, allowed him to kind of sit with that and then began to walk with him to help him come to see that maybe his dreams are real and important. And maybe they're a gift 
because they're calling to the world to see something that it really can and should be. And in both cases, Uncle Jack, once experiencing life in this incredibly distressed sense, finds that distressed life formed and shaped into beautiful and meaningful life. Whether we live to be a hundred like Uncle Jack or not, if we live, we know that we're going to experience distress. It's part of the life that we're born into, that we're baptized into. Maybe that distress is a haunting loneliness that we live with from time to time. Or maybe it's just living in a rubble of shattered dreams that never came to fruition and regrets that come along with that. Maybe our distress comes from children who have made decisions that have led to difficult consequences and outcomes. And we, we watch that all play out with little control. Or maybe this, the distress is relationships that were once life giving but now are torn and tattered. There are some communities of faith that, in a sense, will try to sugarcoat life and, and give this sense that if we just have enough faith, we, they might go so far as to say that you won't experience any distress. Or if you have enough faith and you do face distress, it'll just be a minor blip on the radar. I, I'm grateful to be part of a tradition, though, that is not afraid to immerse us in life, even in its more distressed form. We begin our liturgy with the sign of the cross, a sign of one of the most distressing acts of life, total mental, physical, spiritual torture. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And sacred scripture immerses us in distressed life from time to time, like in today's readings. There's that powerful distress of Jeremiah that he lays bare before God as he feels caught between this call he's given by God to be a prophet and the people he's called to deliver that prophetic message to. A message that they and their city are going to be destroyed. It's hardly popular. And because of that, he's ostracized, mocked, and rejected. Like Uncle Jack, feeling like he's, he's not fitting into life in any way. Distressed even about God and God's role in all this, recognizing that he'd rather not go to those people and share that message. But if he doesn't, he experiences something burning deep within his being, even in his bones. And he's just so unsettled and distressed by all of that. It offers that to God. And of course, in that gospel we just heard, we encounter a moment where Jesus reveals to us that he's really not here to bring us an unbroken experience of tranquility and peace in life. In fact, he's here to stir up life, turn it inside out, and that'll bring us to some incredibly distressing places as he, he gave this wisdom to the 12 apostles that he was about to send out. And yet at the end of that passage, reminding us that every hair on our head is counted, Jesus promises that it's when life is lost in distress that we will somehow come to find even more meaningful life in the process. It's truly a gift today to have baptism. On one hand, it lightens the mood of how distressing life can be sometime. An adorable, sweet, innocent, two-and-a-half-month-old child in Aden. And we come to these waters to baptize him into the hope of resurrection and new life. And we surround his family with hope and hearts prayerful that Aiden will live a long life, experiencing much of the joy and the life of that resurrection, the hope and the peace that it brings. But in today's second reading, Paul writing to the Romans, and Paul reflecting on baptism, Paul also reminds us that yes, while we are in fact baptized into joy and resurrection, baptism is also deeply linked to the distress of death. We're baptized into the death of Christ. So while Eden will experience, we hope, many, uh, many encounters with Easter and joy in life, we know, we who have lived, know that Eden is also in his life going to come to experience distress. He already has, I'm sure. You hear him crying from time to time in distress. And how do you respond to that distress by doing what you're doing now? 
holding him in the love that doesn't just calm the distress, but is the kind of love that will be able to form and fashion that distress into, cal into calmness, into peace, but into growth, which is to say, more meaningful life. Even the act of baptizing Aiden in a few moments is likely going to be a bit distressing for him. A baby laying there on his back, looking up at lights and suddenly finding water poured all over you. I try to have good aim and get most of the water down the back of his head, but who knows, some might get in his eyes or even up his nose, and it'll be distressing. But once again, while I'm doing that, Aiden's going to be held by his family. And that same kind of love that is going to pledge in a few moments to walk with him through the rest of his life as we are going to pledge to do the same as the church, not just for Aiden, but his family as well. Again, that, that kind of love that can form and shape even the distress into meaningful and abundant life. And I know that you, Danny and Nicole, have experienced that gift in your lives as well in a very meaningful way. I've been so blessed to walk with you through the joy of your wedding, now the joy of Aiden's baptism. But you also allowed me into your life in a pretty distressing time. We have a votive candle lit here in memory of Aiden's sister, Ella, and uh, Danny and Nicole lost her. But they allowed me to walk with her through that, with them through that distress. And I saw how you lean on the love of these people to hold you and carry you in that distress. And I witness how you became even more committed and compassionate and faithful through all of that. I feel kind of like the old priest here now talking to you, but in a way I guess I am becoming an old priest. So I hope this doesn't sound paternalistic, but I'm, I'm grateful to see how you grew through all of that, even the heartache. And I'm grateful to you for allowing me into your life and making my ministry more meaningful as a priest. So we gather with you around these waters in a few moments. And that same spirit of Jeremiah and Paul and Jesus and Uncle Jack, recognizing that when we are baptized into life, we're also baptized into death and some real distressing life. But we also gather with you in that same spirit of Jeremiah and Paul and Jesus and Uncle Jack, recognizing that even though life can be incredibly distressed, Deeper than that is this holy fire that burns within us, within our being, within our hearts, our minds, our souls, and even our bones. And it's that fire that gives us the glimpse to trust that even the most distressed parts of life are held by God as a parent holds a distressed child. And if they're held by God, they're touched by God. And if they're touched by God, they're able to be formed and shaped continually into ever more meaningful life. Amen. I'm going to invite the congregation to be seated. I'm going to invite Nicole and Danny and Jacob to come forward with Aiden and stand up here on this step and face me. We'll refer back to our baptismal orders of worship now in the inside of the first page, where it says the pre presentation of candidates. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Aiden Levi Marzal to receive the sacrament of baptism. Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that Aiden is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Aiden grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. 
Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And now I ask all of you, the church gathered along with them, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Aiden in his life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with Aiden and his family, who are committing Aiden and his life to Jesus Christ, and renew our baptismal covenant. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with the pastor. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. Then, let us now pray for Aiden, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Jacob. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that Aiden and all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ your Son may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that Aiden and all who are cleansed here from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This time I'm going to invite the parents and godparents to come down. Who's ever going to hold the king? If you can hold him on his back with his head. I'll do my best, Aiden. Aiden, Levi, Marzal, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon Aiden, your servant, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Sacred prism, family. Anybody had coffee or get a whiff of him after? It smells beautiful. It's perfumed olive oil with balsam. Aiden, Levi, Marzal, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. I always get the first whiff. It's the advantage of being priests. The light of Christ. Let us together welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. It is now my great honor and joy and privilege to introduce to you the newest member of the church in the whole wide world. Aiden, Levi, Marzal, let's give him a round of As the family returns to the pew, I invite you to rise for our prayers of the people. These are prayers brought to our attention throughout the week. Roberta offers prayers of special thanksgiving uh, for her son entering a recovery program. Scott asks prayers for his friend Catherine, who will undergo brain surgery. Jan asks prayers for Liz, for C, and for G. Mary offers prayers of gratitude for her new granddaughter just born, for a healthy mom and baby. Nina writes, please pray for Barry, recovering from a brain hemorrhage. Cecilia asks prayers for her mother, Joan, who is undergoing surgery on well, tomorrow, Monday, June 26th. Anna writes, I would like to give thanks to God for my dad Al's recovery from his broken femur. His recovery is going well, and his mobility is improving. He met with his oncologist yesterday, or a few days ago, and now and was told that he has stage four cell renal cancer. He will begin immunotherapy uh, soon, so please hold him and his health care providers in prayer as he begins treatment. Camille asks prayers for her good health, safety, and for finding an apartment. Rachel writes, please pray for my friend Lauren, who is undergoing IVF after years of infertility, that she may be pregnant with that longed-for baby soon. Sue asks prayers for Dean, as he has been diagnosed with AFib and will see his heart doctor on Wednesday. Susie asks continued prayers for her friend Joelle, 
who was being for, treated for cancer, and for Tom, who was recovering from major heart surgery. Denise asked prayers for Steve, who was being treated for brain cancer, and for her brother Dan, who was still trying to find relief from torn meniscus knee pain. David prayers for Letty. Dean writes prayers for Dean and Sue, as they both have significant medical procedures. Eye surgery for Susan coming up, and Dean having a procedure for his AFib. Prayers for all the families involved in the deep sea implosion of the submarine, and prayers for the never-ending violence and reckless driving in the Milwaukee area. Here at St. Luke's, we also hold in our prayers uh, Wyatt. I blessed Wyatt last week for camp. I hope it wasn't my blessing that was defective, but uh, Steve is here. And uh, sadly, the second day of camp, Wyatt fell and broke his wrist. But, but he's back, and I think doing well, Steve. Yeah, so recovering well. He, children's Hospital is amazing, and they were able to do good work uh, for his wrist. And the hope is that he'll be, still be able to return to camp later this summer. So prayers for little Wyatt and for good and fast and full healing. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud at this time. <clears throat> Again, we just lift Aiden up to you, Lord, uh, knowing that every hair on his head is counted by your love. And just ask that you walk with him, guide him with your grace and your peace all the days of his baptized life. Hear our prayers, loving God. Answer them according to your will, because we make them in faith through your Son, Jesus, risen Lord and Savior, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share that however we're most comfortable.
Lord our God. It is right to give an answer. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Alleluia, Christ. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people.
You may remain seated for our prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of the Son of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have led us through the Lord, and it's a sacrament of our own blood. Send us now into the world of peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sincerity of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Do we have anybody celebrating a birthday this week who would like to go to Art. Anybody else? You could come stand up on the step and see what we watch. And we'll pray for Art. Gracious God, our times are always in your name. And so we ask you to look with favor on your servant, Art as he begins another year of life. Grant that he may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness and goodness all the days of his life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Last 
lastly, um, I'm going to anoint Dean, who's going in for a surgical procedure for his AFib. Is there anybody else who is in need of healing spiritually, physically, emotionally, and would like the sacrament of anointing? Sue as well? Cataract surgery? Why don't you both stay seated there? If anybody is comfortable and wants to come around them and lay a hand on them, otherwise please hold them in your hearts in prayer. I'll give folks a moment to gather, and I'll lay my hands on your head. Pray quietly, I'll anoint you and then give you a blessing at the end. All right, so let's take in the love. Dean and Sue, as you are outwardly anointed with this holy oil, so may our Heavenly Father grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. Of His great mercy, may He forgive you your sins, release you from suffering, and restore you both to wholeness and strength. May He deliver you from all evil, preserve you in all goodness, and bring you to life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace to you both. Run. I know it's warm up here, much cooler downstairs for coffee hour, um, but just a few quick announcements. First, um, you may have known we have a wonderful team of folks hard at work cleaning out some of the landscape burns around church. Um, their effort is uh, they're putting together a plan that's cost effective but also maintenance effective. We want things that are low maintenance. Um, so I'm really grateful for their hard work already. Um, if you have any input or you're interested in helping at all, I have a link to May Beth's email. You can raise your hand too. She's kind of heading up that team, but she'll notice some changes to maintain the beauty of the space, um, but in a way that doesn't, uh, that, that allows for ease of care into the future. Also, you may have seen we have a new little prayer corner in the back of the church. There's a bowl with some sand in it and an icon and some beeswax candles. Some folks have the tradition of lighting a candle for prayer. There's actually several reasons behind why churches um, do that. And I have a, I have those listed on a sheet of paper there, some of those as well as in the parish post. So if that's part of your spiritual tradition, we light candles um, every Wednesday at Tuesday prayer here that people light and put in sandboxes. We just wanted to extend the invitation to Sunday churchgoers as well. Um, also, just the last day, I'd invite you to hold in your date, uh, in your calendars if you're interested. Wednesday night, July 19th, um, from 6 to 8 p.m. We won't have Tuesday prayer that night because our seminarian intern Hunter is going to be leading an adult formation night. Um, we're going to plan on having a simple kind of soup, bread, salad dinner. It'll be from 6 to 8, and he's going to give a talk on shame. Um, sometimes in faith we use language like sin and brokenness, but we can lean into things like shame, which are not really healthy um, places to live out of and, and pray out of and, and exist out of. So Hunter is going to lead us through a night of engaging and challenging conversation and reflection on the concept of, of shame. There's more information and details in the parish post, but again, that's Wednesday, July 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. And anybody who's interested as well, maybe interested in serving as an acolyte, is welcome to stay after today, if you'd like. And Hunter will do another run-through of training as we're training new acolytes here at St. Louis. Lastly, please, come downstairs, have some coffee, it's cooler, have some delicious cake to celebrate the gift of Aiden, wherever he is. And, yeah, <laughs> um, and thank you again, um, Nicole and Danny and the Mar Marzo family for just giving me this gift and being with us this morning. So. Everybody's welcome downstairs after for fun and fellowship. Please rise.
May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is correct. Ding, ding, ding. 537 in the blue hymnal. 537. Thank you.